Hello, welcome to poster PAP number two. I'm Tim Wilkinson. I'm going to give you a quick overview of maskless holographic photolithography. We have here a view of the system panning across. This is our holographic system based on a liquid crystal spatial light modulator. It's a liquid crystal over silicon device and it's run from a, a standard computer. And it's used to display holograms which then diffract light into a pattern and is recorded in the photoresist. Uh, we're zooming into the light source now. This is uh, a 405 nanometer Vixel, which is launched into a single mode fiber to give us a nice clear spatial mode. That then is released into the optical system uh, through uh, that yellow fiber in the background there and uh, is collimated and is used to illuminate the spatial light modulator, the thing with the round shiny mount on the right there. That's a hollow eye device, in this case a pneumatic. A liquid crystal device, but we have also used ferroelectric devices to display the hologram. The light then passes through the beam splitter we're looking at now and is diffracted through a lens and ends up um, being uh, illuminating uh, the photoresist on a uh, piece of glass. And we're currently looking at the interface board for the Holloway device, which was custom made for this particular project. It allows us to display multi level phase holograms. Um, reliably and quickly. We're looking at the mount now where the uh, look, the glass device is stored and is used to line up the optics. The illumination is actually viewed through the glass slide rather cleverly using this microscope objective which allows us to check that the focus of the hologram is also maintained on the slide surface itself because we're using a, a uh, lens to give us the, f the replay field we have to uh, make sure it's in focus. I have here a typical slide, the just standard microscope slides covered with positive photoresist. Um, you can just about see as we zoom into this slide, little patches, there are actually four areas of illuminated on this particular slide which have then been developed using standard photoresist developer, basically salty water. And um, you can see the little patches there and we'll see in a second under the microscope what those little patches look like. Here we can now see uh, zoomed in a magnification of the photolithographic results. You can see that the exposure is okay but perhaps the developing is a little bit shy. Um, we can also see, zooming in now, that's the zero water of the hologram. You can see it's quite substantial and a small reflection on the right. And also you'll see even though we're using multi-level phase we have a residual uh, symmetric order. These uh, patches here on the right where the quality is not so good. Um, and that's because the hollow eye device does not do perfect phase modulation. There's some no noise associated with its multi-level uh, phase generation which uh, leads to the a residual symmetric order. You can see in the positive one order some good clear photographic results and this particular slide is one chosen reasonably at random and uh, as we zoom along we'll see different exposure times, different development. Well, this one's much better you see now each individual um, feature down to a micron or two in size is uh, clearly uh, exposed and almost completely developed and the darker areas are where the photoresist remains and the pinkish areas are where the uh, photoresist has been etched away. And, um, these samples are a little bit old now so you now we see the odd flake and place where the photoresist has peeled off over time which just happens naturally if you leave these samples for too long. Um, so we can see we get good control and we can use various algorithms to reduce the noise. We can use multi-level exposure algorithms. These exposures take about 10 to 15 seconds to do in the photoresist so we get uh, uh, lots of different uh, variables to play with. Uh, we can use multi-frame holograms with different noise floors. I'm using the uh, algorithm developed by LiPo Optics um, OSPR to remove or reduce noise levels. Um, we can use uh, <coughs> various iterative algorithms. We, we favor the gertzberg saxton for these particular patterns because it's easy to calculate and it gives us nice noise properties. We can use the noise reduction systems to powerfully generate our holograms. So that's uh, maskless holographic projection using a little crystal spatial light modulator. I hope it's been as exciting for me as it has been for you. Uh, thank you very much. Bye bye.